You may have heard of it, but have you seen the Roman Empire's version of Las Vegas? We're discussing the sinful city at the bottom of the sea that was sunk many years ago. Why, however, does it have a reputation as a sinful city? Why is it known as the town that broke all of the Roman nobility? Is this the same town now or has it changed? Watch the video to find out. The ancient Roman settlement of Baia stood on what is now the northwest coast of the Gulf of Naples. The area is now a part of Bacoli's commune. As a holiday destination, it drew visitors for centuries. From 100 BC until 500 AD, affluent Romans built villas there, proclaiming it to be superior to Capri, Pompeii, and Herculaneum. It was notorious for the scandals and corruption that were rumored to be associated with its hedonistic attractions. Volcanic and bready seismic activity in the vicinity lifted or lowered the terrain, causing the bottom section of the town to sink into the sea. Modern underwater archaeological research has uncovered several of the stunning structures that are now preserved in the underwater archaeological park. It was not uncommon for Roman sculptures to be unearthed there. The Venus de Medici look-alike Aphrodite of Baia was reportedly discovered in the area before 1803 when it was displayed in London at the exhibition of English antiquarian Thomas Hope on Duchess Strait. Several efforts have been made since 1941 to uncover significant archaeological relics. Excavation has exposed strata of structures, villas and thermal complexes dating from the late Republican, Augustan, Hadrianic and late Empire periods. In two distinct periods, the land appears to have dipped below sea level due to Bradycism. First between the 3rd and 5th centuries during the late imperial era and then again a century later when the ground dropped even farther. Much of the bottom half of Baia had been submerged by the sea by the 8th century. Plaster Hellenistic statues were discovered in the cellar of the Baths of Sassandra in Baia. The town's archaeological museum now features them. Many well-known sculptures have been dismantled and their individual components are included in the collection. The Athenians Harmodias and Aristogaiton, as well as the Veletra and Athena fall into this category. There appears to be evidence that the region housed a factory where marble or bronze reproductions of Greek art were mass-produced for export to Italy. The Sinful City Baia was the Las Vegas of the Roman Empire more than 2,000 years ago. It was a resort town about 30 kilometers from Naples of Italy's caldera-dotted west coast that served poets, generals, and everyone in between. Cicero, a great orator, wrote speeches at his home by the bay. Virgil, a poet, and Pliny, a naturalist, both lived close to the public baths where they could relax. It was also a place where rich and powerful people went to do their dirty business. John Smout, a researcher who has worked with local archaeologists to study the site, said, There are many mysterious stories about Baia. People say that Cleopatra left Baia in her boat after Julius Caesar was killed there in 44 BC and that Julia Agrippina planned the death of her husband Claudius at Baia so that her son Nero could become emperor of Rome. Mineral waters and a mild climate brought Roman nobles to Baia in the second half of the second century BC. They called the town the Flagrian Fields, which means flaming fields, because the area is full of calderas. Ancient Greeks and Romans thought of the calderas as entrances to the underworld. However, they also led to some technological advances. For example, a mixture of lime and volcanic rock was used to make waterproof cement that was used to build domes, marble facades, private fish ponds, and luxurious bathhouses. But since Baia was known for being bad, it may be fitting that the many volcanoes in the area were also its downfall. Over many centuries, Bradycism, which is the slow rise and fall of the Earth's surface caused by hydrothermal and seismic activity, caused a lot of the city to sink into a watery grave where it still sits today. In the 1940s, a pilot shared an aerial photo of a building just below the surface of the water. This got people interested in the once popular coastline again. Soon, geologists were puzzled by boreholes made by mollusks in ruins near the water. These holes show the parts of the hillside had been below sea level in the past. Twenty years later, Italian officials hired a submarine to look at the parts of the city that were underwater. What they discovered was absolutely fascinating. Since Roman times, subsurface pressure has forced the land surrounding Baia to continuously rise and fall, forcing the old ruins upwards towards the sea surface before eventually swallowing them back again, a kind of geological purgatory. Due to the way the Earth's crust is shaped, these ruins are actually in fairly shallow water with an average depth of 6 meters. This means that visitors can use a glass-bottom boat 
or video barca to see some of the strange underwater structures. Local diving centers like the Censure Sub Campi Flec Rio, which worked with the BBC in a recent documentary about Baia, also offer snorkeling and scuba tours of the submerged city a few kilometers out in the Thurkinian Sea. On a calm day, people can see Roman columns, old roads, and plazas with intricate paving. The entrances to underwater grottoes are marked by statues of Octavia Claudia, who was Emperor Claudius' sister, and Ulysses, whose outstretched arms have barnacles on them. There's also a lot to see above the water. In fact, many of the sculptures that are underwater are copies. You can see the real ones up on the hill at Baia Castle, where the archaeological superintendency for Campania runs a museum of artifacts that were found in the sea. In the nearby Parco Archaeologico del Terme di Baia, which is part of the old city that's still above sea level, you can see a lot of Roman ruins that are still above ground. Amadeo Maiuri, the same archaeologist who found Pompeii, dug it up in the 1950s. Herculaneum is a land-based historical site with mosaic terraces and bathhouses with domed roofs. The Old Town The Roman city of pleasure and excess that was left to fall apart. Some of the most important and interesting things left behind are dome-shaped buildings like the large so-called Temple of Mercury, the Temple of Venus, and the Temple of Diana. These buildings were thought to have been built by some of the more famous people who lived in the town's villas, although they were not temples but parts of thermal baths. Even though most of the old town's ruins are very interesting and beautiful, there are a few that really stand out. The Temple of Mercury, the Temple of Diana, and the Temple of Venus have always been the most popular temples, both now and in the past. Before the Pantheon was built in Rome, the Temple of Mercury was known for having the biggest dome in the world. The Temple of Mercury has a dome that is 71 feet in diameter and was a marvel of Roman engineering when it was built. There were both public and private baths in Baia. A complicated underground system brought warm mineral water from hot springs to the baths. The underground system also heated the homes, which was common in well-established towns during the Roman and Byzantine empires. It also supplied the saunas in the town. The saunas were used both for health reasons and for fun. The Romans thought that water could heal them, so they used baths and saunas to treat a variety of illnesses. Parts of the old aqueduct, Aqua Augusta, could still be seen today. It was used to bring water to the town. Modern Baia Modern Baia, which is the near Parco Archaeologico del Terme de Baia, is not as beautiful as it used to be, but it still has a sense of leisure and pleasure. Once filled with mansions and bathhouses, the coast is now home to a small marina, a hotel, and a few seafood restaurants that line a narrow road going northeast towards Naples. Seismologists predict more volcanic activity along Baia's coast in the near future, making the city's fate once again uncertain. 20 small earthquakes were felt in the area just this year, and in the past few years, people have talked about closing the sunken ruins to visitors for good. For now, though, people can look around this underwater city for a secret entrance, if not to the underworld, then at least to some amazing underground treasures. Tell us in the comments what you think of the video. If you liked today's video, please subscribe to our channel, like it, and click the bell icon for more updates.